The crowd roars with raw euphoria as Adolf Hitler is sworn into office to be the heroic liberator of the German people. Hitler promises his resentful, hurt nation that he will make Germany great again. No, he will make Germany the best in the whole goddamn world. Hitler was an aggressively mediocre artist that couldn't even get into art school, wasting his life away drawing pictures on postcards for a living. He didn't know shit about politics or international relations, but this man was a natural and radicalizing people. Hitler rose to power by invoking violently strong emotional responses in his people. He already pissed all over the bullshit reparation treaties from losing World War I. The only thing left to do, really, was to give his people the legendary homeland they deserved, the glorious Lebensraum, and nobody was going to stop him. Here's how his delusion progressed. The British and French, so conveniently positioned next to the Atlantic Ocean, were able to ship away their excess populations to other countries without a care in the world. That's just bullshit! The German people were, obviously, smarter, better, and yet they were doomed to stay trapped in this claustrophobic landmass. Why not destroy the lazy, incompetent French, evict those inferior Slavs, and delete that specific group of people for the greater good of the German people. <laughs> the victorious countries of World War I had to come up with some half-assed moral justification to seize the overseas colonies of the defeated nations. Woodrow Wilson came up with surprise, surprise, Wilsonianism, a supposed formula for world peace with strong emphasis on the right for self-determination of peoples. Yeah, that's convenient and all when you use it to say, give up your colonies, Germany. The people have the right to determine their sovereignty. But Wilson sure as shit wasn't smiling when Hitler parroted those exact words to start the most atrocious horror humanity's ever seen. After all, if there are Germanic people here, there, everywhere. Why shouldn't Germany have the right to self-determine itself across Europe? Oh shit. First on the topping block was Hitler's own home, Austria. Austria was another Germanic country that split off in the medieval era to do its own thing, came to fight together in World War I, but lost together in a depressing turn of events. Both Germany and Austria were completely kneecapped after the war, and the sentiment of why not just combine whatever land we have left started to gain momentum in Austria. Around the time that Hitler seized power in Germany, the Nazis were growing as a serious player in Austrian politics as well. Germany declared Austria as a protectorate, and the Austrian Nazi party was fanatic with joy. In March of 1938, the German military crossed the border into Austria and finalized the annexation. You have to understand, the vast majority of Austrians welcomed the Nazis and Hitler into their country. Germanic people all across Europe were also stirring up, and the West was starting to get properly spooked. Hitler pressed the attack before they could react and prepared to annex Czechoslovakia and Sudetenland. This was right on Germany's arbitrary border drawn after World War I, which meant that this land's population was made up of a lot of German stragglers. Tensions between these Germans and the native Czechs were rising towards the point of no return. Hitler used this as justification, saying that Sudetenland should have always been a part of Germany because of your bloody Wilsonian principles. The Germans in Sudetenland showed their support for Hitler with a rebellion, and it seemed like the collapse of Czechoslovakia was inevitable. Germany was way too powerful, even after losing World War I. Someone had to do something. Someone had to stop this, right? Britain, France, and the West in general just watched in horror. Of course you wanted to stop Germany, but you and what army? They all died in the trenches. The Allies barely dug themselves out of the Great Depression, and all those overseas colonies were hemorrhaging money, and for what? Germany, on the other hand, was forced to give up its colonies, remember? It could consolidate all its furious potential straight in the mainland, rearming itself and reviving its economy at the same time with terrifying momentum. The Treaty of Versailles was completely useless to stop the German snowball. 
Your military can't go over 100,000 troops. <laughs> sure, buddy. We'll just fill that number up with highly trained officers so they can lead the conscripts when push comes to shove. You can't research new tanks. What tank? You mean this uh, tractor right here? Germany slips away with stupid troll excuses, daring the outraged enemy to do something about it. Hitler's Germany slapped its balls on the table and demanded complete, unconditional control of Sudetenland, refusing to negotiate whatsoever. The emboldened Germany even had the audacity to threaten military action if the West didn't comply, loudly revving up its, uh, tractors. Britain and France get trench warfare PTSD flashbacks as they realize they might have antagonized the Germans a bit too much. We just got out of a world war, goddammit! Surely, Hitler wouldn't be crazy enough to start another. Not after last time. But, ah, uh, come on, it's Hitler we're talking about, and you do not want to test that motherfucker. Britain and France awkwardly shuffle around with half-assed half-measures, pretending to be the greater man and saying, all right, we'll allow you to have Sudetenland, but no more, you understand me? No more. Here's the thing. The Czechs never agreed to any of this shit, but were forced to cough up their key industrial district that ran the whole economy, three million of their people, and all their military equipment that they stockpiled on the German border specifically to stop the Germans. Yeah, Germany agreed that they were done after Sudetenland, but are you really gonna trust that Hitler guy? The East European countries suddenly felt very, very vulnerable. While Britain and France were jerking each other off about how they stopped a war, Hitler was already getting ready for his next move. Turns out, he had his fingers crossed behind his back the whole time. Just six months later, Hitler invaded mainland Czechoslovakia. The Western powers did nothing, again, witnessing their worst nightmare manifest itself into a terrifying reality. Germany was already bigger than it was during the Holy Roman Empire, but they weren't done yet. Next name on the death note, Poland. We went into the centuries of bad blood between Poland and Germany, or the Teutonic Order, in our video on how Poland kept getting deleted, so check it out after this one. Poland, completely deleted from the map for 123 years, was Lazarus back into existence when Germany got torn apart after World War I. As far as Germany was concerned, that was bullshit! They had Poland before the war, so why the fuck did you take it away? As a final slap in the face, the Allies just gave a huge part of Germany to Poland because Poland deserves access to the ocean or whatever, literally splitting Germany in two. Remember, Germany's really committing to the whole self-determination story, and how could they let their poor fellow Germans get surrounded in Polish territory like that? No. The principles of Wilsonianism dictate that they have to do something about this. Fuck. There, there's no way he invades. But what if he does? The Allies couldn't even do jack shit about Czechoslovakia in their front yard. Britain and France really need some help. So they go to Russia, now rebranded as the Soviet Union, I guess. Shit, this isn't ideal either. The Soviet Union is literally communist. But what choice did they have? Unfortunately, Britain and France had no leverage other than, ah, uh, help us do the right thing. Hitler finds out about this and offers Stalin an even better deal. Why don't we double team Poland? Hell, why shouldn't we own the entire territory between Germany and the Soviet Union? Stalin is faced with a choice that will change history. Does he go with the Western imperialists or does he go with that crazy motherfucker in Germany? Nazism and communism are fundamentally incompatible ideologies. However, Stalin believed that Hitler's deal was better for his country, nonetheless, and officially signed the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact. Just nine days later, on September 1st, 1939, Germany invaded Poland with the explicit goal to delete Poland again, this time for good. Europe, hell, the entire world was panicking. War was coming for humanity. The international community couldn't just stand by and watch anymore. Those useless half measures got them in this shit in the first place, remember? Britain and France are forced 
to do the very thing that they so desperately tried to avoid. God knows they tried everything else. They are forced to declare war on Germany again. This has been David Bradford from Knowledge Raiders, and stay tuned for the next episode!